It's nearly a year since I made the decision to quit my full-time secure job as a senior designer at an agency to pursue a freelance career as a filmmaker, photographer and content creator. And whilst I'm incredibly proud of how my first year has gone, it's definitely had its ups and downs. Here's six things that I've discovered along the way that would have been really helpful when I started. Of course, the caveat here is the points I'll share with you that I really hope you find them helpful, but these tips are all based only on my personal experience and I'm still fairly new to this. So if you're thinking of making the leap into freelance this year, then make sure you're checking out other professional freelancers views and not just taking my advice as absolute fact. So without further ado, let's get into the tips. Before you leap, build a financial safety net or have work lined up in advance. So this tip probably isn't new to you as I certainly came across it over and over again whilst I was thinking about going freelance. I'm not sure who originally came up with the concept, but the theory goes before you quit your job, either have three months of wages saved up as a runway or have three months of work already lined up for when you take the leap or in a perfect world, have both of those things in place. Now, whilst this was a helpful concept to consider when I was thinking about going freelance, I also think that it possibly fueled my fear of taking the leap. You know, how can I line up three months of work when I'm already busy with a full-time job? How can I save if I already have financial commitments? Those kind of doubts. Now, my personal circumstances meant that I was really fortunate and I did have some savings, but I still only had about two months of runway when I took the leap. I definitely didn't have three months worth of work lined up. At the time, I took the view that I would be able to generate work once I was freelance and actually have the time to market myself, build networks and go out looking for opportunities and living on my savings in that short term to make that possible. Now, doing this legwork on top of a full-time job would have been really difficult, so that's why I took that approach. Looking back at that initial period, I was fortunate to hit the ground running with several projects that meant I never actually had to dip into my runway fund. Now, on one hand, you could decide that that fund was unnecessary and I could have taken the leap into freelance without it. But personally, I feel like that is a view only afforded by hindsight and everyone's circumstances will, of course, be quite different. What I do know is that this initial period for me after quitting my job was really mentally challenging. Self-doubt, negative self-talk, anxiety was really high. So having that runway fund was a huge safety net. And whilst I'm over the moon not to have needed to dip into that fund, just knowing that it was there if I needed it removed a huge financial pressure, which allowed me to focus on the task of growing my workload without stressing about keeping a roof over my family's head. Next up, get organized with your finances. I know this is kind of connected to what I've just been talking about. Whilst this was the first year that I was fully freelance, um, I have actually been registered as self-employed in addition to my full-time job for over seven years now, which means I already had some experience in managing my finances and my tax liability. Now, because of messing up in the past, learning the hard way, I immediately wanted to structure my banking in such a way that means when I get paid for work, a proportion of that money is moved to a savings account and saved to cover the tax. Now, the peace of mind that this gives me is huge. I speak to so many freelancers who don't prioritize their accounts and every year there's a mad stressful rush to file their tax returns and then the stress of actually finding the tax that they owe on top of that. So getting organized early on has been a huge stress saver for me. And top tip, if you are able to be quite generous in the amount that you put aside from each invoice, then when your tax bill arrives, it's likely you'll actually have accrued a nice little excess, which you can then treat yourself with, add to your runway or reinvest into your business. It's a great feeling to have what feels like free money at a time when so many other freelancers are scrapping around trying to find enough to pay their tax bill. Build 
a solid routine. Going from a structured full-time job to suddenly going it alone can feel really daunting, especially if your current job has a lot of systems and processes in place to help you manage your time. My role at the agency was really well structured to ensure an efficient and productive team environment. So when I went freelance, suddenly my routine was gone and it was really easy for time to just vanish without doing anything of value. I'm definitely still very much working on this even now, but taking the time to work out how you want to spend your time and scheduling it has really helped me to maintain focus. Last year, I read The One Thing by Gary Keller, and one of the concepts he discusses in the book was time blocking. Now, the idea is that you work out your main priorities and you block out non-negotiable time in your calendar to achieve these items. Now, you can be as broad or as granular as you like with this approach, and of course, things will always come up to derail you, but the benefit of going through this process for me has given me a clear idea of where I'd like to be spending my time in a perfect scenario. I also just completed the task set out by Ali Abdul in his recent video, How to Make 2024 the Best Year of Your Life. And he takes the concept of time blocking even further by using a calendar to map out what your perfect week looks like hour by hour. I found this process incredibly helpful in ensuring my weeks are planned in accordance with the goals that I've set myself and whilst I've done this at the beginning of the year, I really wish I had a better understanding of these concepts when I first went freelance, as I think there was a fair amount of floundering to begin with, as I hadn't quite defined a solid routine, structure or processes to move me towards my goals. Get used to anxiety weird I know. <laughs> so once I'd handed my notice in at my job and was faced with the reality of going it alone, I found myself incredibly anxious about the future and immediately second guessing my decision to take the leap. When a good friend asked how I was feeling at the time and I told him I was feeling really anxious, his response was, well of course you're going to feel anxious. And whilst this wasn't exactly the response I was hoping for, it was absolutely true. And being told this by not only a friend, but someone with a huge amount of experience in creative freelancing was actually quite freeing. Instead of focusing on why I felt the way I did, I was able to channel my energy into doing the work I knew I needed to do to get to where I was going. I actually enlisted the help of a therapist through BetterHelp and found this to be a really effective way for me to change my mindset and it provided me with valuable tools to help me manage my anxiety. I think I'm naturally a worrier and one of the concepts that has really stuck with me since those sessions is that anxiety is the manifestation of the amount that I care about what I'm doing. So instead of seeing it as a debilitating factor towards my productivity, I can reframe it into my superpower. I feel the way I feel because I really care about what I'm doing and therefore channeling that anxiety is ultimately what will aid me in creating great work and progressing in my career. The last year has had its highs and lows and even during the highs, it's been easy to find something to be anxious about when the success of my work and finances rests only on my shoulders. Will I get enough work this month? Have I got more work than I can actually complete this month? Will that invoice get paid on time? Am I creating valuable work? The list, of course, goes on. For me, getting comfortable with a certain amount of anxiety and making sure I channel that anxiety into a productive way has helped me lean into the challenges and be accepting of where I currently am on my freelance journey. Build a network. I thought I understood the importance of this when I took the leap, but honestly, having a trusted network has been one of the biggest factors in getting me through my first year of going solo. When I started, I knew that some of my work would come from people that I've worked with previously, but I also had this somewhat transactional process in my mind. I thought that I would update my website, push some posts out on social media, and my phone would start ringing with new business 
inquiries. This was totally incorrect and incredibly misguided. In reality, I can count on one hand the number of new business inquiries I've received this last year and nearly all the work I've done has come from people that I have worked with previously or referrals from my network recommending me. If I hadn't have had a network of other creative business people and the opportunities that they presented, then I honestly don't think I would have made it through my first year as a freelancer. I cannot overstate the importance of building a solid support network, not just for generating work opportunities, but also for the guidance and emotional support that I've received when I've got stuck with something. Freelancing can be, of course, quite lonely. So having a group of individuals that understands the challenges and to bounce ideas off has been invaluable for me. Define your offering. Whilst I've just talked about most of my work coming from my network last year, and I've talked about it as a positive thing, I would definitely like it if I was getting more new business inquiries from new contacts. This is definitely an area which I've been slow to act on. So my advice to you is that if you're gonna go solo, it's to take the time early on to define what you want to offer customers or clients and do your best to package it up in a way that allows you to clearly market yourself. Towards the end of 2023, I got a bit more serious about this, but I've definitely got a lot more work to do here if I wanna grow my workload and earnings in 2024. I think this can obviously take many forms depending on the services that you offer and to add further complication when you're just starting out, there is of course a tendency to say yes to everything and I think this is totally fine and a natural part of building a freelance business but the clearer you can define and communicate your offering, hopefully the quicker you will start getting good inquiries and more importantly the inquiries will hopefully better align with what you want to be offering and the work you want to be doing. Healthy body and healthy mind. I don't think this is necessarily specific to being freelance, but I've personally found that in order to shoulder the financial and creative responsibilities of running a freelance business, having a solid foundation of health and fitness has been essential to keep me feeling positive and productive. Now I've been on my own fitness journey over the last three or so years from being young and carefree, never exercising or focusing on nutrition and just relying on my youth to keep me going. As I approached 40, I found myself overweight, unhappy with my appearance, sluggish and tired and with poor mental health and mental resilience. So for me, focusing on my health and fitness has yielded so many benefits, not just in my appearance, but even more importantly, in my mental health. Now I know that if I want to be performing at my best professionally, it is essential that I first prioritize my health and nutrition as a foundation to everything else. Ensuring I structured my weeks to include physical activity initially seemed counterintuitive. Surely if I spend my time at my desk working instead of out walking or exercising then I'll be more productive right? But the reality for me is that the concentration and focus I can give after exercise is far superior and leads to better work in a shorter time than just slogging it out for hours at my desk. My freelance journey is still only just beginning and as I said at the beginning, I by no means have it all figured out, Um, but hopefully my perspective after a year might benefit you if you're also thinking of taking the leap into freelance life. I've found the last year to be overall a really rewarding experience and the flexibility it has brought to my life has been amazing, especially as I just started a family. And whilst it's been full of challenges, I've personally found it to be a rewarding and exciting thing to have done. So I hope you found those tips useful and if you do take the leap into being freelance in 2024 then I wish you all the very best of luck with it and other than that thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.